Okay, yesterday I published a video about a translation tool called Hardsum Translation Studio. And today it's only natural that uh, the tool I'm going to cover is Swordfish. As it happens, the author of Swordfish is uh, Rodolfo Raya, and he used to be the director of product development at Hardsum. So we can say that uh, Hardsum and uh, Swordfish are in some way relatives. Now, Rodolfo works in his own company called uh, Max Programs, and if we go to the website of uh, Max Programs and uh, we go to the products page, we can see that uh, he is uh, interested in fish because most of his products are called after some kind of fish. So the main product is uh, Swordfish Translation Editor. There's also an aligner called Stingray and there's a glossary editor called Anjovi. So the product that we are going to look at today is Swordfish Translation Editor. Like with other tools, we are going to translate a simple Word document which looks like this. So there's a title in bold, there are two paragraphs and in the second paragraph there's a portion of text which is underlined. So let's switch to Swordfish. And here is what the main interface of Swordfish looks like. Getting started is a bit awkward because if you go to the file menu, you won't find any new options. So usually it's a file new something, not in Swordfish. So instead we'll go to the database menu and we'll create a database, which will be our translation memory. We'll call this database Eurobarometer. And uh, like in Hardsum, we can choose the database type from several possible types. And I will choose the first type, which is internal. Uh, I'll accept the default, optimize for speed, and I'll select create. Now the database is created. I can close this. And if I go again to database and select TM databases, I can find the database I just created. I will tick it. And uh, under write enable database, at the moment there is none, I will select that database. And uh, I'll click on accept. Okay, so now I have uh, a write enabled TM, which is a database called Eurobarometer. Now I can go to the file menu and I will open a file. And this is the file I want to translate. Uh, Swordfish wants by default XLIF file, but since my file is a Word document, I'll select all files. And my file was on the desktop in the documents folder and that is the file I just showed you. So I'll open it. Now Swordfish notices it's not an XLIF file and uh, offers to convert it to XLIF. Yes. So here is my file and uh, Swordfish will put it in the same folder adding the XLF extension for XLIF. So I'll click on next and here I can select my source and target languages, well, they are OK. And uh, I think I can accept all the defaults, so I'll select uh, Convert. And now the file has been uh, converted and it's in the editor. And the editor is a uh, tabular one, like in uh, many other tools. So we have two columns, one for source and one for target. Uh, strangely enough, uh, there is no separate column for the segment status. But anyway, this is the first segment, so we'll translate it quickly like this. And in order to move to the next segment, let's have a look at the tasks menu. And here we can see there are several possibilities for approving segments. And I'll choose this one here, approve and go to next untranslated, which is alt down. So I'll press alt down. And now I have my second segment. I can translate it quickly like this and again all down. And the third one, I'll translate it. And again, alt down. 
And this segment contains two tags. So first I'll translate it. And then I'll add the tags. So the first one comes uh, in this word, biannual. It's in French semestriel here. And in order to insert tags, I can have a look at the edit menu. And there are two ways, either with uh, the insert tag command, which is control T, or with what Swordfish calls quick tags. And it's uh, control plus the number of the tag, like in Heartsum. So I'm here and I can click on control one and that will insert the first tag. And at the end, I'll click on control two and that will insert the second tag. Now I can move to the next segment, Alt down, and I can translate it. And again, I have uh, two tags, which are for the portion of text which was underlined in the original source document. So the most effective actor was underlined. In French, it's uh, l'acteur le plus efficace. So again, at the beginning of this portion, I click Control-1, and at the end, I click Control-2. And here, by the way, we can see that uh, Swordfish uh, uses uh, far less tags than Hartsum does. So that's better, in my opinion, more efficient. And another interesting thing is that uh, uh, Swordfish displays tags only in the active segment. So if I move with page up two segments ahead, I can see that the fourth and fifth segment, which had tags, uh, the tags are not displayed, so I, I only see the pure text, and uh, which makes it more legible, in my opinion. So only if the segment is active, tags are displayed. So now my document has been translated, and I can create the translated version. And this is done via the File menu, and here I'll select Convert Xlif file to original format, like this. And uh, Swordfish will put the translated document in the same folder and it will add the target language code to the end of the document name. So I will have Eurobarometer FRFR because uh, I translated it in French. I think I don't need to tick store translations in database because uh, my translations already went into the TM. So I can just click on convert XLIF file to original format. Yes. And now the conversion is completed. And Swordfish will open the translated document for me to see. And it looks okay. All the formatting uh, bold for the title and uh, underlined for the second paragraph uh, is uh, where it should be. So that's how to translate a simple Word document using Swordfish 3. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe to my channel and see you in the next video.